When it comes to stretching, you know that I love GHS. But what to do in these cases where GHS simply doesn't work well? And what if it takes too much time and effort for you to use GHS? And what if you don't give a damn what I like and you simply don't like GHS? Well, for all of these cases, I found the perfect solution. And we look at that right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So good to meet the and thanks for watching my channel. Yes, there are a million ways how you can stretch. And by the way, if you want to know the full million, there's the Stretch Academy of Atom Block. But what if you don't really feel like going back to university and you are stated also get confused by GHS? For these cases, we have some automatic stretch scripts and processes in place. And the quality of them is rather mixed. Now I found mostly by accident two scripts which work perfectly together and give a rather good result. I wouldn't say as good as GHS, but almost. So the one script is really new and is from Frank from SETI Astro, another YouTube channel. And he created a lot of YouTube videos in the last two few weeks about his new tool, which he calls Statistical Stretch. He, by the way, joined my Patreon channel and we had in the last weeks some very good discussions how to improve his tool. So very good things happen when you join my Patreon channel. If you're interested, link is in the description below. But back to his tool. His tool is nothing spectacular in the sense of AI, exterminator, whatever, but that was not his intent. His intent was to create a tool to do a base stretch in an easy way and in a controlled way. And I think that's the big difference to the auto stretch function which you have in PixInsight, which is really hard to control. And so it was quite amazing in the last weeks to see the improvement the tool went through. And I think it's at a really good stage already now it does the stretch based on statistics. It doesn't clip anything. You can tell how much it should stretch ahead. You can even emphasize on the brighter parts. So as a base stretch tool, I really like it. And I will put the link to the repository and also to the recent video of Frank about it in the description below. Now, but as stated, it is a base stretch tool. So it's not intended as a one-click solution. You click on it and you have the perfect stretch. So what comes afterwards? And there you have two choices. One is GHS. Because from my point of view, GHS is really difficult at the start, at least with some pictures. And once you have a base stretch in place to actually do to the emphasis on the weaker nebulosity and stuff like that, it's quite convenient to do with GHS. But for this video, I want to show you a different, again, easier way to do it. And that's another script which actually by accident encountered in the PixInsight forum where they have a section where they introduce new scripts. And it's called IHDR. And I think the intent of it is not really a pure HDR script, but it's a mix of HDR and stretching. But funny enough, when I played around with it, using it from an unstretched picture, I found didn't really work well. And I think also that was not the idea. You needed the base stretch. You see where I'm coming from? We have now the script for the base stretch, the statistical stretch of Frank, and now we have the script to complete the stretch. And that's IHDR. And using these two scripts intertwined gives you really good results, simply by applying two scripts. That said, both scripts are not AI, both scripts are not one button tools. You still have to know a little bit what to do. So I don't want to lie, what I will show you now in PixInsight, I tried that before already a little bit, what works, what does not work, that I get the right value. So if you like these scripts, it will also need a little bit of working with it, a little bit of getting the experience, which settings 
work for your pictures, for your style also of stretching. Personally, this is not something I just will demonstrate now here for you, but that's also which in some situations I will use. But before we go to PixInsight, a short word from my sponsor, which is me. <laughs> Did you actually know that I have another YouTube channel? I will bet you didn't. <laughs> it's called 10 Minute Biz and it's about short, concise, to the point videos about business topics like project management, program management, organizational change management, and whatever else I feel in the business frame might be interesting. And it's called 10 Minute Biz because I guarantee that no video will be longer than 10 minutes. So if you're interested in business, if you like my style of creating videos, please hop over to this channel and subscribe. We'll be really happy to also have you on board there. And with that, let's jump to PixInsight and have a look at these two scripts. Welcome to PixInsight. We have three pictures we want to stretch. The first one is a regular nebula, which I shot myself. That's the Pac-Man nebula. That's how it looks like with the auto stretch activated. I will now create a clone so that we can compare it afterwards to the auto stretch. We remove now the stretch and we get now in utilities the statistical stretch. That's how it looks like. Quite easy. You have here the target median. So they say for about a nebula, this should be okay. The number of iterations, if the whole process here should run multiple times, I usually leave this at one. The curve boost that actually boosts the brighter part, for example, the nebula. You can also deactivate here the normalization and you can choose between a linked stretch and an unlinked stretch. Now the 25 here, 0.25 is actually intended if you want to use only that tool to stretch. And even then I feel it's usually a little bit overboard. So you probably would have to lower it down to about a 20 if you want to use only this tool. But we actually want to use another tool in addition to that. So we go down to about 0.15. The curve boost we can absolutely use a little bit, but also here less is more. I would say about 0.05 is the max that I would use. You can always choose here a preview. And from my point, this looks exactly what we want. So I click execute and here is our pick. So now that looks already very good, but now comes the little choker. So the next tool we're gonna use is an HDR tool called IHDR. So also here less is more, especially because we already stretched quite far. So forget the high and medium HDR, even the low HDR is too much in such a situation. So you see it actually changes here the stretch at intensity. So we have to go down here even more to about 0.10 is usually what I like. And for the mask strength, which protects the highest part, we also have to go a little bit up. With that, we execute it. Okay, so let's have a look now and compare it with the auto stretch. So that's auto stretch. And that's our now stretch picture. It's quite amazing the difference. Obviously the background is much darker, but not too dark. And when we look at the nebulosity, I can barely see it here. And here it's very nicely visible. So I think this is a very nicely stretched. So with that, let's go to number two, which is the picture we already looked at in the SHO tutorial, the Eagle Nebula. And if you remember, I told that I was not able to actually do it with GHS. So I had to use the auto stretch and then GHS afterwards to tone it down again. So let's see if with the tools, if they can do it, because it's quite difficult to stretch and how it will look like. So as before, I create a clone. Now we deactivate the auto stretch. And also here we tune it down to 0.15. 
Also here we can boost a little bit the bright parts and that's fine. We can have a look and that looks actually for our purposes again, very good. So execute. Okay, here we go. And that looks already pretty cool. So a little bit dark, but really nice. Now again, let's slam the IHDR tool on it. But here we have to go even more down. So we go down to a 0.1 and we add the mask strength again. And then we say execute. Okay, and this is our result here. Let's compare it again with the auto stretch. And while the difference is subtle, still we have, especially here in the middle, it's quite faded, like blown out with the auto stretch. And here we have much more detail, much more contrast. And also the rest, the colors are much more intense. So it looks, looks much nicer. So this is a very good place to start and do the rest of the processing. So let's open the last one. That's a Galaxy Andromeda. So let's again do a clone. And also here we go down to 0.15. But here we do not want to increase the core. It's actually intended that the core is not so strong. So we say execute. Okay. And I think you agree there's more out there to see. So it's not all yet there, but that's intended. So we again go to script, IHDR. Here we can leave it on a low, so 0.17, but with the mask strength, we go up massively because we don't want that it blows out the core. Okay, and now we're talking. Now we see all these spiral arms. So let's put again, the auto stretch on top of it. And do I have to say anything, especially here in the core area, it's completely blown out by the auto stretch. And here, nicely just in the middle glowing. And here all the structures are very well visible. So again, this is a starting point for processing in the nonlinear stage. But for that, it's a very, very good starting point. Okay, that was the demo. I'm curious, what do you think? Personally, I really like the three results. Again, I might be able to get it a little bit better with GHS. Again, you might use only the statistical stretch for a base stretch and then use GHS and make yourself already a little bit easier with that. But I think these are definitely two scripts which might come handy and it's worth to actually include it in your PixInsight. And that was it already. See you next time and clear skies.